Tamara Abraham, founder and coach of Abraham Medical Coding Coach. So on today's episode, I want to answer some questions or a question that I get often from clients, uh, students, as well as those that are interested in pursuing a career in the coding industry. So that question is, Do I need to have a certification in all areas of coding? Do I need to have a certification in all areas of coding? So the topic of today's episode is the certification plethora. So to answer that question, the answer is no. It also depends on why are you pursuing your certification? Are you pursuing it to fill a void or to feel validated? Or is it a requirement of your current employer? Or perhaps you're looking to pursue another opportunity in a different area of coding and that certification or a particular certification is required in order to apply for that role. So I guess I should change my response to yes and no. And it really depends on why are you pursuing the certification? So I wanted to speak a little bit on obtaining the certification to fill a void or to feel validated. So we're in a time in society where we want to be seen or we want to be heard. And though, you know, we, we, we are following celebrities or these superstars on Instagram, perhaps Facebook and other social media outlets. And so we look at them and we observe them and it's like, oh, what they're doing is natural. It comes natural to them. They have followers, they have likes, they're they're making money off of just being them or doing whatever is natural to them. So we want to receive that same form of validation or accolades. So we pursue multiple certifications because we want to deem ourselves as an expert in coding. Here's the thing. You don't have to pursue or obtain all of the certifications in coding to feel that you are an expert. I personally know several individuals who I deem and others may deem them, deem, excuse me, deem them to be experts in the coding industry there are some who only hold one coding certification or two and they're working and they're working in that industry or that particular specialty that they're credential in some of them don't hold a college degree and they are still considered experts in their particular area of coding Some of them choose not to pursue additional certifications because, again, they are experts in their areas of coding. Some of them can actually work in other areas of coding without the certification. I am an example of one of those individuals that don't hold a certification in all areas of coding and have and have and is working in other areas of coding that, again, I don't hold a certification in. So, again, I pose this question, why are you pursuing the certification? Are you pursuing it 
because again, you want to fill a void. You want to feel validated by your peers in the industry and you want them to, you want to be considered an expert. If that is your reasoning for it, I would make a recommendation. This is really, again, a recommendation to stop pursuing those certifications, especially if you're not utilizing them. So it's one thing if you pursue the certification and then you apply what you've learned or you're actually working in that industry with that certification. But to simply say, I have it, just to say, I have it, you're wasting your money as well as your time. You could have used that time to perfect the current certifications that you already have instead of trying to pursue all the certifications, coding certifications that are out there. And so the question then becomes, are you an expert or are you operating in overkill? I'll repeat that. Are you an expert or are you operating in overkill? Listen, coders, those wanting to be coders, coding students, those interested in the area of coding, don't do that. Find the certification because there, there are many coding certifications out there. Find that one that resonates with you, that resonates with what you're doing and what you want to pursue. And once you obtain it, pursue it. Don't get it and then say, okay, now that I have this one, I'm going to go after another one. If you have a a grand scheme, if you have a big picture goal of what you're trying to do with all these certifications, by all means, go for it. I am a big supporter of those evolving and those reaching their goals. But if you're just doing it, again, just to have it out of fear, like a fear, okay, you may lose your job, or again, you want to feel validated, you want to feel important, don't pursue the certification. Just perfect the skill that the skill or the skill set that you currently have, and not go out there again and waste your money um, and your time, knowing that you may never use that certification, or you may never be recognized. So a lot of times, again, people pursue certifications, and again, it's not just with coding, but in life general, people pursue things. They start businesses. They, I don't know. They they pursue things because they want to feel a void or they want to feel important by their peers, by their loved ones or whatsoever. And we need to stop that. I can attest that I have been a victim of that. Um, not so much with coding, but in other areas of my life because I, I, where I felt like there was a void. And so I tried to pursue other things in hopes to get that validation or that recon, recon, recognition from specific individuals and it didn't work so then you end up still feeling bad or worse off because your attempt to manipulate others did not work so again evaluate your reasoning for pursuing a certification or multiple certifications so again, I did mention that I know several colleagues who are expert, experts in the industry of coding. Um, one is a compliance, she's like a big time ex compliance executive, one certification. Another is a really good coding educator, has multiple uh, certifications, but she is actually working in those in in those particular areas of coding that matches her credentials i have another friend or colleague who has one certification but has worked in a particular industry or specialty of coding and has perfected her gift in that area and now she's considered or deemed to be an expert not only in that particular area, but in other areas of coding. So 
perfect your gift, perfect what you currently have. So I'll share my personal experience with um, certifications. So I have my certification as, as or my, my base certification. I have the general surgery credential and I'm also a coding instructor through AAPC. Of course, the main certification you need to have because again, you can't code without a certification. My general surgery credential came along, again, this wasn't something I was pursuing, that was obtained through the beta testing where they were rolling out the specialty certifications. I sat for the beta test for general surgery, I passed. I was granted the certification. The instructor, it was partially employer requirement, not so much that I become an instructor, but that I need to pursue or evolve my role as a coder. But so therefore I chose, well, what can I do? Because I really wasn't like looking to like get into all these certifications or whatever. But I said, well, how can I utilize the, the, the instructor's role or credential that would help me evolve my coding career? So I've trained individuals before I've obtained my certification or my credential as an instructor. I presented on various topics related to coding. I've uh, presented at some of the uh, exam prep meetings. So I've, I've been, I was always doing it. I just never had that credential. So I decided to go ahead and get the credential to solidify my already already had experience. So that's how I came upon my credentials. Those are the only coding credentials that I have. However, I have worked and, and am currently working as an outpatient coding auditor. I worked as a risk adjustment coder as well as a risk adjustment coding auditor. I worked in other specialties as an auditor and as a coder. I have years of experience. Those years of experience has, I guess, surpassed the need for the credential. Now, that doesn't mean that you go out there and say, okay, I'm, I'm going to apply for a role and you, you don't have the credential nor do you have the experience. I have years of experience. Auditing, I don't have an auditing credential. I don't have a compliance officer credential, but I've been a compliance officer for a, multi, a large multi-specialty group. I'm an auditor. I've been a corporate compliance auditor. I am a audit consultant today for industries or coding industries or revenue cycle management groups and healthcare facilities across the nation. And I don't have the credential for that. However, I do have the experience I perfected the skill set without the credential. Do I have books? Yes, I do have books. Don't get me wrong. I do have the books to, to as a, I guess, as a support, a backup support, because I do study the areas that I do code. Just because I don't have the credential doesn't mean that, okay, I, I'm just going to do it. I've studied, I have the books, I have the resources needed to study those particular areas of coding or auditing. I've also received training from other experts in those particular areas. So I have that, I have that, I have notes, I have the resources, but again, I don't have the certifications. So that's why I would say, no, a certification is not required. It is not. Um, do I want to pursue another certification? At this moment, I don't. Because again, I have the experience, I'm able to get the resources and I'm able to study on my own to perfect that particular skill set. Because I don't want to code everything that's out there. I don't. I want to code the things that I want to code. I want to teach others who are interested in the things that I want to code. 
or I coded previously. So just again, just before you go out and you pursue again a plethora of certifications, ensure that this is something that you want to do. On to the next subject. <laughs> yeah, I got caught up in that one. So my aunt told me this this said this thing to me when I first started coding. And I'm gonna leave this with you as well. If you can read, you can code. If you can read, you can code. So again, i think the quote says it all. If you can read, you can code. Now, employers do, again, require certifications, the main certifications. The two recognized organizations for health information management, as well as coding, are the American Academy of Professional Coders and American Health Information Management Association. Again, the AAPC and AHIMA. They do have certifications. So you would need to obtain your certification I do know with AAPC, you want to make sure you have that base or that main certification, which is the CPC, the Certified Professional Coder. With the HEMA Health Information Management, they have a variety of certifications. And don't get me wrong, AAPC has a variety of certifications as well. With a HEMA, not only can you obtain your certification, a HEMA also offers degrees in health, health information or coding which is the RHIA and the RHIT. They also offer the CTS, which is your Certified Coding Specialist, amongst other certifications um, in the coding industry. Now, again, you don't have to pursue every certification that AAPC offers or AHIMA offers, or you may want to get um, a coding degree. Check out AHIMA. But again, if you can read, you can code. If you can read, you can code. So I think I've jumped on that topic <laughs> for a minute. So again, I leave you with just evaluate your reasoning or rationale for pursuing multiple certifications. So one of the things that I want to talk about or our Wellness Wednesday tip is getting out, getting out and get moving. One of the things, and those of you who know me, who have listened to the podcast, I'm big on the overall person. And as someone who's worked remote coding or in a remote setting for a long time, so there are some things that I know that I have um, applied and I've learned along the way to help me to become a success as a remote coder. So I know we're in the phase or in the stage of productivity where we are being time, where we're we're constantly sitting at our desk in front of a computer for at least, I'm going to say at a minimum of eight to nine hours a day. It is important, and I repeat, it is very important that you step away from the computer, get out, get some fresh air. Again, I'm my favorite thing is walking. But I've also started this new exercise, Lord help me, kickboxing with nine rounds. So if you have a nine round kickbox, kickboxing fitness in your area, please check them out. So with nine rounds, you go through nine stations of different exercises and you spend three minutes on each exercise and you're in and out in less than 30 minutes. Check them out. So, again, it is important that you get out and that you get step away from the computer. One, it's good for your eyes, and two, it's good for your mental, and also for your overall health, your overall body, because you're not moving, you're, you're not having the proper circulation when you're constantly, or you sitting in front of the computer for eight to nine hours straight. So what are some of the tips? One, um, I like to get up and walk away um, from the computer. Some recommend, like, they don't, like, for snacks or what have you. They don't have those snacks near them on, the de on their desk. They will actually 
make it a point to get up and walk away to perhaps the kitchen. And of course, you have to get up to go to the restroom. And they would spend at least, I mean, 10, 15 minutes away from the computer to give them to stretch, to take care of business, like the restroom business, to grab their snacks, and again, to give your eyes that rest. And then you come back, and then, you know, you work, and then you do the same thing. Um, my physician recommended setting a timer on my phone for every hour to break away from the computer to get up, again, to stretch, to give your eyes a rest, and to focus on other things, and then come back. It is important that you do that, very important. And then if you have a schedule where you're able to take longer breaks, or on your lunch break, take a walk, go outside, get some exercise in. Um, perhaps you can take a fitness class, but but all but by all means, get out and get moving. So that's all that I have for this week. So tune in and see what's all good, great, and some of the not so good things that are going on in the coding industry. So until next time. You all take care.